Hello friends, welcome to our next video discussion. I am Dr. Harvinder Singh from Psychiatry Education Forum. So topic for today is can L-theanine help with anxiety management? Well, I have seen this being used by many of my patients. This is available over the counter. So I decided to make this video to see what data is available in literature and I would love to hear your thoughts if you have experience with L-theanine and anxiety. Uh, so before we begin, I just want to say, you know, for anxiety management, the first line is definitely psychotherapy for mild to moderate anxiety and medications are not first line. But uh, L-theanine, uh, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes, uh, in my opinion, L-theanine do have a role in mild to moderate anxiety. But before we go there, let's understand what is L-theanine. So L-theanine is actually, we all know what green tea is. Uh, it's a non-protein found in green tea. Uh, the name is Camellia senesis. I know I'm not saying it right, but L-theanine content of tea varies though. So I looked at literature to see what does one cup of green tea contains in terms of L-theanine. So data says it's 25 milligram and I'll, uh, and you will know why I'm including 25 milligram here in few minutes. Uh, but a little bit more on L-theanine, uh, it's also shown to cross the blood-brain barrier and it can reach that peak concentration in 30 to 120 minutes. So half hour to two hours can take depending on the individual after you drink tea or take L-theanine. Now, the next question you will ask me is, well, is there any mechanism of action for L-theanine and anxiety improvement? Uh, before I say that, uh, I just want to emphasize one thing. When you look at the literature on L-theanine and psychiatric condition, so studies have shown not only efficacy for anxiety, but also for depression and cognition. But I will only talk about anxiety in this session, otherwise this session will get really long. So regarding mechanism of action, well, uh, chemically speaking, L-theanine is very similar to L-glutamate in structure. So L-theanine have shown to bind to glutamate receptor subtype, uh, although have low affinity for that, but uh, most studies have shown it to be agonist for NMDA receptors, thereby causing help with the anxiety improvement. But the interesting thing is studies were also done in rodents, uh, in mammals, um, and they also found that it has effect on inhibiting glutamate reuptake, increasing the GABA concentration, and very interesting effect on serotonin level so globally speaking, it reduces serotonin level, but it specifically increases serotonin in specific brain regions like striatum, hippocampus, and hypothalamus. So I believe these factors do play a role in other areas, uh, including depression improvement, sleep improvement, and cognition improvement. But these are the acute effect of uh, taking L-theanine. But if you take it for long term, for a few weeks or maybe longer than that, studies have shown that it has an effect on brain-derived neurotropic factor expression, specifically in the hippocampus, BDNF. And this is mostly seen in this hippocampal area after three to four weeks of administration of L-theanine. And this is also known to have a positive neuroprotective effect. So I will not 
tell you what I think, but this is what the data shows. So you can associate this data with other diagnostic uh, criteria for other psychiatric condition. So this is a likely mechanism of action based on the studies that were done in, um, in past. So in, in next few minutes, what I will do is I will talk about four articles or studies published on L-theanine and anxiety. And the only goal for doing uh, the review is for us to see what dose of L-theanine was used, for how long it was used, and was it helpful for anxiety or anything else, and was it well tolerated. So our goal is to stay clinically focused only here rather than going into study design and everything. So the first study was published uh, in 2016 in Nutrients Journal. So the main goal was this study was done to explore the effect of L-theanine based nutrient drink, nutrient drink on the mood response uh, to, uh, to stressors, to cognitive stressors. Uh, so there is a specific uh, L-theanine based drink, uh, which I will talk in a few minutes. So they studied that to see how does mood responses changes when stressors are there with L-theanine. So this was actually a double blind, placebo controlled, balanced crossover study. They have 34 healthy participants, adult, between age of 18 to 40. So these were healthy uh, participants, so be mindful of that. And they used this L-theanine based nutrient drink. It's called NeuroBliss. This contains 200 milligram of L-theanine and other contents as you can read here. So what did they found? So the primary outcome measure was the subjective stress response to multitasking cognitive stressor. And they found there was a significant reduction after one hour of taking this L-theanine drink. Now this is very important to read that uh, one hour after taking this uh, drink, they had an improvement in their ability to deal with the stressor's response. And few of my patients have also mentioned me that they use L-theanine as PRN as needed um, to reduce the anxiety response and they don't feel sedated on it. So this is an interesting uh, point here based on this study. And they actually also looked at the cortisol response uh, from the saliva. And that was also reduced three hour post dose. So definitely that one to three hour is a good time for the response to go down so that a person can deal with stressors more effectively. So very interesting fact here. This was study number one. Now going to the second study, which was published in 2013. So this, this was also interesting. They actually looked at the anti-stress effect of theanine in humans. And this was evaluated in fifth year university students doing, during their pharmacy practice. So, so they looked at how much stress can be controlled with the L-theanine in these students. So uh, this was actually a single blind group comparison. So it was not very high class study like the last one we talked about. And uh, they had 20 participants and they were randomly assigned to L-theanine or placebo group. And the dose actually was very interesting here. They used 200 milligram twice daily of uh, L-theanine. Now this is the only study I found that they use twice daily dosing. Most studies have once daily dosing. So they gave people uh, one in bre after breakfast and the other one was given at lunch. And uh, the other placebo was actually a lactose tablets. So they were taken for one week prior to the pharmacy practice and continued for 10 days in the practice period. So this duration is also important, not a very long term trial here. So another important thing they looked at uh, at every participant is to they did actually something called state trait anxiety inventory test to assess their baseline anxiety level also. 
and they also looked at alpha amylase activity in their saliva which is actually a marker for the sympathetic nervous system activity which can be heightened when anxiety is high so they did that at baseline and then they looked at changes when these um, uh, theanine was given and what did they found well uh, in the placebo group uh, that salivary uh, alpha amylase activity in the morning was higher compared to the L-theanine group. So that's number one. And their subjective stress response was significantly lower in theanine group. This is very important point that we are looking for. So this suggests that theanine intake had anti-stress effect on students. And one point also which is actually very evident that people uh, who had higher score on their anxiety trait uh, had higher level of salivary alpha amylase activity pre-practice before initiation. And um, they, they also found good response in sleep also. Uh, although we are not going into sleep, but uh, there was a significant correlation of sleep disturbance and high anxiety, which we see a lot in our patients also. So the basic conclusion is that theanine intake suppressed that initial stress response of student assigned for a long-term commitment of pharmacy practice. So very clinically relevant point. Uh, it's like even uh, for that social anxiety, I assume it should work in that area too. Uh, and the duration is very interesting. You can use it for short duration to reduce that effect. And the third study I will talk about now was published recently in 2017. And this study was actually done in major depressive disorder patients. Uh, this was actually um, uh, an MDD patient, as I said. But the reason I included this is they also looked at anxiety traits also. So this is clinically relevant. And we know how many people, patients have a combination of major depressive disorder with generalized anxiety disorder or other anxiety disorders. So this study was actually an open label clinical trial they have 20 subjects, which were patients with major depressive disorder, four males with a mean age of 41, and 16 females with mean age of 42. And they gave them uh, this L-theanine, 250 milligram per day, was added to their current medication for eight weeks. So this was a long trial than the last that we have seen. And uh, as I mentioned, this study not only looked at depression rating scale, but they also looked at that state trait anxiety inventory that the last study looked at. But this study also looked at Pittsburgh sleep quality index and other cognitive measures, which I will not go into. But what did the study found? Well, they found first the depression scale reduced to a significant level with LTNN and the anxiety trait score decreased uh, to a significant level after L-theanine administration. They also found actually good result for the sleep scores and cognitive function score. So the study concluded that eight weeks of chronic L-theanine administration is safe and has multiple beneficial effects, including on depressive symptom, anxiety symptom, sleep disturbance, and cognitive impairment in patients with major depressive disorder. The only thing is this was an open label trial, so definitely not very strong study, but a very important study to consider in your decision making. And the last one uh, was most recently published in 2019 in this Nutrients Journal. So this was actually done in healthy adults with no medical conditions or anything else from a psychiatric standpoint. So they mainly looked at uh, how LTNN administration can have effect on stress-related symptoms. Uh, the reason I included this study is first, this was a randomized placebo control class crossover and double-blind trial. So very strong study in that. And uh, there were 30 subjects, nine men and 21 females, women, uh, they had no major psychiatric illness, as I said. 
and uh, they were given either placebo tablets or L-theanine at a dose of 200 mg per day for four weeks. So this was a four week trial and the study found that all these stress related symptoms variables which is the depression scale, anxiety scale, sleep index, they all showed statistically significant improvement after L-theanine administration. So the findings suggest that L-theanine has the potential to promote mental health in general population with stress um, and cognitive impairment. So um, friends, this was a very brief summary on L-theanine. Uh, as you might have already seen, studies are there but not uh, in a large amount. There were other studies but I have not included all of them. But the basic thing uh, for us to understand here is that L-theanine may uh, have a efficacy. But my main question is which severity of anxiety will it be more efficacious, if efficacious at? My understanding is for mild to moderate anxiety. For severe anxiety, I need to see, uh, I need more data. The second is it's available over the counter and uh, it's a nutrient. It's a no side effect one. So definitely worth considering. And I assume patient, our patients will be more open to these options. Uh, but let me know if you have used, if your patients have used it and if you had positive, neutral or negative experience with this. And this is my email address at hsing at psychiatryeducationforum.com. Either you can reply below to this post or you can send me an email. I would love to hear your thoughts on this or anything else you may have on mind. So friends, I will end our session for today. But again, before ending, I will very quickly say if you're interested in learning more, do join our Physician's Guide for Clinical Psychiatry course. Uh, we have more clinically relevant topics. Actually, it's 260 plus chapters now. And there are many new things that are almost ready to be released uh, on this course. So thank you, friends. Thanks again for listening to me. You all have a good day. Take care and bye for now.